Um, thank you for joining us today, everybody. I'm Wisconsin Attorney General Josh Call, uh, and I'm here today to talk about uh, two issues. First, uh, I'm going to be providing an update uh, on the status of an investigation into an officer-involved shooting incident that took place uh, in Kenosha on Sunday evening. Uh, and then secondly, I'm also going to uh, comment on uh, some recent events uh, that have taken place in, in Kenosha. Um, so first, uh, we're going to be providing some updated information about uh, some of the basic facts that have been learned so far in the investigation. Uh, we are able to do that at this point uh, because this is an ongoing investigation and some of the interviews of material witnesses have now been conducted. Uh, so we now feel comfortable, consistent with the investigation, uh, to release this information. Um, we've sent out a press release uh, that contains the details. Um, but the basic facts uh, that we can report at this time are, are these, that on the evening of Sunday, August 23rd, 2020, uh, Kenosha Police Department officers were dispatched to a resident, residence in the 2800 block of 40th Street after a female caller reported that her boyfriend was present and was not supposed to be on the premises. During the incident, officers attempted to arrest Jacob S. Blake, age 29, uh, law enforcement deployed a taser to attempt to stop Mr. Blake, uh, but the taser was not successful in stopping him. Mr. Blake walked around his vehicle, opened the driver's side door, and leaned forward. While holding on to Mr. Blake's shirt, Officer Rustin Shesky fired his service weapon seven times. Officer Shesky fired the weapon into Mr. Blake's back. No other officer fired their weapon. The Kenosha Police Department uh, does not have body cameras, and therefore the officers uh, were not wearing body cameras. Uh, the shooting officer, Kenosha Police Officer Rustin Shesky, has been a law enforcement officer with the Kenosha Police Department uh, for seven years. During the investigation following the initial incident, uh, Mr. Blake admitted that he had a knife in his possession, uh, and DCI agents, that's the Division of Criminal Investigation, uh, recovered a knife from the driver's side floorboard of Mr. Blake's vehicle. Uh, a search of the vehicle located no additional weapons. Uh, law enforcement immediately provided medical aid to Mr. Blake uh, and Flight for Life transported him to Freighter Hospital in Milwaukee. Uh, Mr. Blake remains at the hospital. Uh, the Division of Criminal Investigation at the Wisconsin Department of Justice is leading this investigation and it's being assisted by the Federal Bureau of Investigation the Wisconsin State Patrol, and the Kenosha County Sheriff's Office. Uh, all involved law enforcement officers are fully cooperating with DCI during the investigation, uh, and the involved officers have been placed on administrative leave. Um, as I said, uh, this is an ongoing investigation, uh, so that is the extent of the information regarding the facts of this case uh, that we can share at this point. Uh, there have been uh, interviews conducted of material witnesses, uh, but the investigation uh, remains ongoing. Uh, under Wisconsin law, uh, in cases in which a person dies, in a case in which an officer fired their weapon, uh, the law requires that an independent investigative agency be brought in to conduct the investigation. But in many other cases, uh, the Wisconsin Department of Justice is brought in to conduct an independent investigation as well, and that is what is happening in this case. Our agency is the independent investigating agency. Our job is to gather the evidence uh, as completely and thoroughly as possible and provide that evidence to the district attorney's office. I'm joined today by, uh, among others, DA uh, Mike Gravely. Um, their office then makes uh, the determination about uh, whether charges are filed. Uh, so that's the information I can provide right now about this case. Um, I also want to comment on the events yesterday evening in, in Kenosha. Um, what happened yesterday night in Kenosha was despicable. Uh, two people were shot and killed and a third person was shot and seriously injured. One of the things that we have seen in the last few nights is that there are a number of people, certainly some and quite possibly many of the people who've been involved in uh, destructive activity or violent activity who are not from the city of Kenosha and in, in some cases not from the state of Wisconsin. Um, this community has been through some extremely traumatic events in the last few days. The people of this community deserve to have the opportunity to grieve, 
They deserve to have the opportunity to come together, to protest peacefully, to call for the change that they would like to see, and ultimately to work to heal this community. People who are coming to the community to commit arson uh, or violence, uh, first of all, if they think they are serving some agenda, they are wrong. Um, all they are doing is creating chaos. Um, the people of, uh, who have been impacted, in particular the people of Kenosha, are the ones who should be leading the way uh, as people protest peacefully. Um, it is vital that we work to unify people. There has been a lot of division recently. It's easy for politicians to stoke division. But what we need to do is to come together as we work to strengthen our criminal justice system, as we work to call for justice in the system, and as we work to heal our communities.